and off you go, Chanel. Thank you. Well, mm -hmm. Welcome, welcome to you. It's uh, it's lovely to have you here, and thank you to your to you students for joining. I appreciate what a busy time of year this is right now. So very grateful that you've taken this this opportunity. I am Lucy from the Career Development Centre, and it's my pleasure to welcome Chanel O'Brien from Enterprise Dunedin. Thank you, Chanel. Oh, kia ora katoa. Thank you very much, Lucy and Lindley and everybody at the Career Development Centre at Otago University. Um, it's been great working with you, particularly at this particularly interesting and quite disruptive time in our history and uh, and working with the business community and, and collaborating with, with you guys all um, and, and in terms of trying to bring students and business people together. It's a pretty critical time, isn't it, for everybody. And um, so I thank you very much for the opportunity to be able to talk with students at Otago University um, who have a great reputation with our businesses in Dunedin and of course elsewhere. My focus is of course Dunedin as part of the Economic Development Unit of Enterprise Dunedin. And so my focus is around whole range of economic development initiatives and objectives and, and job done is actually just a, a project that I've been doing for a, a number of years is a, around job creation. Um, so I thought I'd start by just giving people an indication of what job done is um, and um, some of the guidelines and some of the things that from a student perspective that they would need to know. My main focus is really on, on the business side and that's to, to help businesses get to grips with the program and to help facilitate the opportunities for students. And luckily I've got the likes of Lucy and Lindley who work on behalf of the university and um, also people from Otago Polytech who liaise with the students. And so the student side is well catered for through careers development teams such as yourselves and, and my jobs to see what businesses are up to and see what we can do to help facilitate those interactions. So I thank you very much for bringing people together today um, and uh, look forward to seeing uh, what conversation ensues from this afternoon's workshop. So first of all, it's um, job done really is a, it's a way of getting, facilitating students and businesses to interact together. But from a city perspective, it's how we um, continue to retain talent in the city. That's a really important part of, of uh, Kopapa, if you like, of what we do here, and uh, retaining talent to build capability and capacity within our business sector um, and various sectors actually throughout the city. So initially, this program started as a result of people within the ICT or Information Communications Technology uh, community needing to have uh, some support and talent um, and so 10 years ago, this was established. We're now, we now actually offer this program to, to 12 or 13 different sectors around the city. Uh, everyone from, as I say, ICT tech through to education, the creative sector, not-for-profits, um, niche manufacturing, biotechnology and so forth. So it's, it's got a wide remit now and um, we have businesses that come back annually to partake of the talent that resides in Dunedin and um, as I say the, the sort of the, 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 the icing on the cake for us as a city is the retention of talented people within the town um, and of course job creation. So uh, as a rule we have um, under normal circumstances we have uh, opportunities for 50 interns to be placed within the Dunedin business community and normally most years we do manage to to reach that target or very close to it. This year of course we're dealing with a different set of circumstances as businesses really uh, drill down deeply into what their actual their real business needs are in a particularly challenging time and so we uh, have modified our uh, our expectations as we all must and sort of changed our way of, of doing things and so um, from my part I take, I'm taking a softly softly approach in terms of, of talking with businesses about the program uh, because um, they have a lot to deal with and I guess I just wanted to let students know too that that's something they should be considering when they're talking with businesses if you are applying for any of the internship roles that they're they're busy and uh, they've got a lot on their minds. Uh, but those who have come into the program clearly are interested in connecting with you. 
and um, are, are happy to engage in the right way. So I'll, I'll talk a, bit, a little bit about that further on. But as I say, it's a really proven way for businesses to find skilled students. And I've got the website up at the moment. Some of you might have already had a quick look at the website before, but just if you click on to the, the students part of the website, there's a guidelines section uh, which just gives you an indication of what it's about. So the so job done is a paid internship program. Um, retaining talent and skills in the city is the key focus. Um, from a strategic perspective, uh, and that's that's very much part of how we operate through our economic development strategy on our theme for hub for skills and talent is a, is about actually retaining skills and talent in the city and attracting that, uh, but also actually more importantly than that is actually focusing on business need and that's the key to this program it's actually what are the business needs um, and what it really does is just then enable a facilitated process to unfold giving the business opportunity uh, the business person an opportunity to connect with it with students yes. that feel that they can meet meet that business need so over the 10 year period that we've been working, we've got some really interesting research and feedback from students. Um, a really interesting part of what students tell us is that the key things that they love about the program is that it's an opportunity to build relationships with business people and industry experts. It doesn't matter that you're perhaps doing a degree in a particular subject area, it may be that that doesn't actually relate to what the business needs. It might be that you have other skills or other attributes or experience that relates to what the business needs and building that relationship with the business person um, and other industry experts in an area that you can, can work in is, is really valuable for that intern to have that ongoing relationship. Even if you don't get a job at the end of it, you still have a good positive relationship, hopefully, that you can build on. Uh, at a later time. And even students who perhaps leave Dunedin at some point or other, if you've interned through job done for a period with a Dunedin business and you have a good experience, um, you know, you've got somebody back here that you can tap into and talk to and relate to um, at a later part in your life. Because uh, quite often uh, students who leave Dunedin um, may wish to return a bit later on in their life journey. Uh, and if you've got a few contacts in the business community that can go a long way to helping you resettle back into the city. So we take a really long term view of how this program works. This isn't just about a summer job. There are many elements and aspects to the program in terms of building those longer term relationships. Um, working with experienced teams and students being able to add value to a business is a really is a real plus for the interns. Um, so what we're talking to people about really with students is that unless it's a very technical role, and I can talk about some technical roles in a minute, but unless it's a very technical role with very specific requirements, you know, it might be that you just have the really the right skills, the right attitude, um, maybe some life experience that you can bring to the table and a business person may pick you up for an internship option. So um, I think another thing that's really important is that it is a paid internship program um, and that means that the businesses and ourselves really value what, what students bring to the table. So you're paid for your work. Um, it's about getting that real world experience and, all, and, and, and for us again, ensuring that we provide opportunities for you uh, to stay in Dunedin. Because let's face it, it's a pretty great city. Um, so here's just a couple of reflections from uh, students who have been interns in the past, talking about just the ease of, of the relationship, getting things sort of moving. In previous years, we have a face-to-face -face, um, event, which normally happens uh, mid to late September at the Otago Polytech in the hub. It's a great way for Dunedin people to connect up with the students and, and um, see each other face-to-face. -face. We couldn't do it this year, unfortunately. Um, but you know, this in turn talks about just really getting to grips with some Dunedin based companies. A lot of students don't realise that we have a really quite a vital um, dynamic business community in Dunedin. Um, 
education is, of course, is a, is a, a very key industry in the city, but in the industries that I'm working in, which are mainly tech-oriented, ICT and digital, uh, you know, they create over 300 million to our GDP and have produced well over 2,000 FTEs or full-time equivalent jobs. And for every one of those jobs in Dunedin, another four supporting roles or supporting jobs are created. So the tech sector is a really um, important part of the future of this city. And um, if you feel that you would like to be part of it, then, then this is another way of getting in there. Um, I love this, what this person says. It's a great way to be thrown in the deep end. You've no chance to fake anything. You are who you are. And if they like it, then, they, then you get in. I like that it's so blunt and relies on personality as well as how well you can work under pressure. So that was somebody who'd been through the program and, and had had a really exciting, uh, well, just kind of, I guess, had, had landed on their feet and were able to sort of go with it. And I, I think in many ways the program it does give students you don't you know you don't have to be the most academic student in the world that's not what it's about it's about um, being flexible and and being willing to try th something a bit different and try something new um, and understanding what's actually what lies beyond the octagon so that gives you a, a bit of a sense of, of what to expect and what the guidelines are. Any student can apply at any, sta any stage of your study, provided that you're actually enrolled at the university and or the polytech, and international students are welcome as well. Um, they need to demonstrate that they can work in New Zealand and that um, we also ask for a reasonably good level of English language reading, writing, um, and uh, spoken English of IELTS 6.0 or above if possible, which I think is what's required for undergraduate degree anyway. So interestingly, a number of our students, um, uh, most of our interns are actually at undergraduate level, but certainly postgraduate level come into the program as well. And you could be a first year or a fifth year. As long as you meet the business need, I'm not worried what stage of study you're at. It's what the business needs and that's what's that's what's interesting to me so we'll if you go on to the who's looking part if you see the inter internship tag on the website hop onto that now this will give you a bit of a sense of who's actually out there in the community at the moment looking just a heads up that once this person once a business has an intern in place we take the opportunity off the website um, just a, a note of caution as well. As I say, the business people are pretty busy. Um, if you're unsure of, of how to contact a business person, and, and generally it will be through email nowadays, now through through this, at this point in time, if you're unsure about how you might want to contact a business, um, I'd recommend that you um, talk to Lucy or Lindley, see if they can help you craft an email or, just have a conversation with them if you're unsure about anything and you want, just want to get a second opinion on how you might like to approach any of these businesses. If um, alternatively you are feeling pretty confident or you, you think that actually I'm, I'm willing to give this a go uh, without any um, further ado, then please go ahead and email the person um, and the details are all located within each of these various um, opportunities here. So I thought I'd actually start with Bliss Technologies because they're very interesting. Bliss, Bliss Technologies, it's, it's, they're in the biotech sector, biotech, health tech, and what Bliss does, they're based out in South Dunedin, and they're, they're discovering and commercializing quite unique strain, strains of probiotics for human health. And they have a number of different countries that they work in, um, New Zealand, Australia, the USA, Canada, and China. They're looking for two interns, a marketing intern uh, to help with social media, digital execution and content development, and a laboratory intern, so microbiology focus with R&D teams, so helping across various tasks. So quite a, an interesting opportunity for students that maybe are sitting within the sciences for the lab intern side of things, or maybe more widely in sciences and humanities in the marketing 
side there. So the person to contact is um, Julie Curfee. She's the marketing director at Bliss Technologies. And you can contact her by email um, with an introductory email uh, introducing yourself, perhaps including a, a a document that might outline some of your skills and expertise and experience in that space. Um, so what the business person will do is have a look at that and they'll decide whether or not they'd like to um, continue to have a conversation with you. So the purpose of, of, of the first interaction with the student, with, with the business, and it's the same actually at the, at the speed interview event, the purpose of them is actually, is more introductory than anything. Um, but the, you know, the, the, the key to solving this puzzle is that you, um, the key objective of your, of your email is to try and get a second interview, is really to try and get a second, uh, maybe a phone conversation, or maybe they'll invite you to their business, or they'll meet you in town and have another conversation with you to see whether or not um, they'd like to take it further. So that's the objective of your interaction with them. They won't probably give you an internship on the spot. They'd like to come and talk to you and perhaps see how you, um, if you're a good fit with them and their business and their business need and get to know you a bit better before they bring you on board. I think the next one that, that might be interesting is Blue Jeans. So Blue Jeans are, are located in the exchange. They're a inter very interesting tech company um, in the ICT community and um, they provide meeting platforms for working places. Um, they're actually, um, working in the audio, vid, video and web conferencing um, tool kind of space. So very, very pertinent for what today's needs are. They're looking for a couple of developers. So uh, again, a, quite a technical role. So if, a, if there are students here who are perhaps developing, doing some coding off their own bat and um, enjoy that sort of thing or are doing software engineering um, through computer science or maybe some information science papers, they might want to look at this. Um, they're looking for an iOS developer, a software engineer to help develop their iOS app. Um, if you've got some knowledge in Swift and Java languages, that would be great. Um, they're also looking for another developer uh, to help develop software to enable them to work across a whole range of video platforms. So quite specific technical roles. I think if you were to apply for that, you go go and email um, Meg. Um, don't phone her; just send her an email. And if you have examples of some of the work that you've done, for example, you know if you if you've if you've been working on a project that looks interesting that that would have fit, make sure you mention that in in your email because I think any project work that really relates to the roles can help the business person. Um, decide whether or not they want to take on, take you on for a, for a next interview. Another technical one, Cloud Cannon. Now, this is a very interesting company in that, that these people were interns um, for a Dunedin-based company here, and uh, after they they actually got both got work actually with this company, and then after a while decided to spin off into their own startup, and so now uh, Cloud Cannon. Uh, has 15 staff. Uh, they are with the program every year and they have built up a lot of their, their talent through this program. Um, they're actually, a, they're a software engineering company and they're looking at improving web development processes. They're looking for a couple of roles, um, support engineers and a web designer. Now, I think they may already have, in fact, actually, funnily enough, that's a picture of them there. These are the, this is the CEO of the company, George, here. Um, so they may already have one intern already up their sleeve, but they are looking for web developers and support engineers. Um, so if you've got some skills and understand languages such as, um, or, about, or, about, or, or can build website using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Git or Jekyll, if you've got those sorts of skill sets, and these are the sorts of people that you should be talking to. Um, so Cloud Cannon is again, it's, they're based actually south of the Octagon 2 in Bond Street, just in the um, warehouse precinct area, which is, of course some of you may have visited before. Uh, it's a very, a really interesting up and coming part of 
the city. Um, lots of beautiful heritage buildings there. It's a very interesting area to, to visit. So for the students who are um, interested in the arts and arts administration, the Dunedin Friends Arts, uh, uh, Dunedin Friends arts Trust uh, uh, has taken on interns for a number of years. And um, so they're in the creative sector. And so students that are interested in the creative sector and events, and of course events are, a, <laughs> the events industry is under um, a number of complex pressures and, and um, dealing with all manner of things as we go in and out of various levels through COVID. Um, this would uh, take somebody who's very flexible, agile, able to think on their feet. Um, so for those of you who are familiar with the Fringe, um, or if you're not familiar with it, it's a 10-day festival held every March. Uh, local, national and international artists perform. I'm not sure if the international ones will be able to next year but however there are 90 plus events in the program it's a very very busy uh program of events so they're looking for three interns a graphic designer um a publicity intern and a ticketing intern now um they i'm sure they would have had quite a bit of interest from the student body on these but i suggest that you contact Gareth uh, by email, director at DunedinFringe.nz uh, to talk about those opportunities if you're a student that has perhaps in the background, um, perhaps you enjoyed designing posters or you've uh, made your own zine or you're, uh, you've done a little bit of work marketing or you understand how to create invitations or you've been able to um, put your hand towards some creative digital work, then, then maybe that's a good start. And as I say, you know, if you've got some examples of your work, it's good to have that um, to show. Publicity in turn, um, that's going to be around having some really strong written and oral communication skills. So if you've got some, um, if you're very good at writing, if you're really good at crafting uh, catchy sentences um, and are able to write um, in a whole range of different social media contexts, so this might be quite good. Uh, it helps, I think, for the Fringe if you're actually already interested in the arts, um, or you've perhaps, you know, you attend gigs, or you go out and sort of enjoy some of the creative community and what they're doing. Um, that will give you a sort of a bit of a heads, a sort of maybe a foot in the door if you if you already are connected into the arts community by being a participant yourself in some way or um, enjoying being an audience member out there. The ticketing intern role, um, that's a very busy job actually, and that's going to be a real thinking on your feet um, sort of role. Um, lots of ex exceptional organization skills, organizing um, uh, with the sponsors, which is an important role. Um, so uh, yeah, somebody who's calm and can kind of deal with anything that's thrown at them. So problem solving skills. If this is something you think you might be interested in, I'd say give Gareth an email at director at janinefringe.nz and uh, see how, how he responds. As I say, Dunedin has, um, you know, we're strong in our education um, heritage and um, through the tech sector, that education ability is now able to be shared far and wide and Education Perfect is an example of such a company now in Dunedin who have really gone from strength to strength. Started actually as a, uh, a pair of brothers who came to Otago probably about 10 or 11 years ago and did the Audacious program, which is a program that some of you may be aware of, which is run through the Distiller, which is in Leithbank Street. And the distiller is a space for people to go and um, just see whether or not they are interested in working on an, e either sort of becoming an entrepreneur or working in an entrepreneurial based company. And Audacious is a student related program for university and polytechnic students that really gives them a good insight into what it is to be a startup entrepreneur. Um, and Education Perfect were actually, as I say, a couple of guys that, that did that program and through that, this very significant company has developed. So what they do is they really humanize technology by creating really engaging technical and digital educational tools for students. Uh, they work in over 60 countries around the world and their, their passion is creating lifelong learning 
for students, um, usually at the secondary school level. So they're looking for an enrollment assistant, somebody to help um, create accounts and classes for new and existing users. So for January through March uh, of next year. So I would contact, if you could, um, Tobin at events at educationperfect.com. Um, the business is in a bit of a, is in a growth phase, so um, you never know. And they've actually taken on a number of students as interns over the years who have taken, uh, been taken on as uh, full-time and or part-time employees. Uh, so great supporters of job done. I'll have a bit of a talk about Firebrand. Uh, they're actually also our partners um, in um, job done. They may in fact already have their interns in place. Um, in fact, I think I think they probably do. But anyway, they're still there on the website if you want to have a look and, and, and even if they already have their interns in place, it just pays to get a sense of what companies are looking for. Just for your own education and your own kind of um, getting to grips with what people are, are after at the moment, particularly in the in the creative sector. Um, so they talk about communications and design marketing interns with, again, sort of empathy for people, um, good written skills, good communication skills and ability to connect. Um, these are things that you don't really learn academically, um, but that you can pick up through various life experiences that you might already have um, that you can share with companies like Firebrand and others that are looking for people that are able to um, be fluid and flexible in the work environment. Um, it's all very much about customers and doing what's right by the customers and um, seeing how you can solve problems. So, I mean, if you've got those sorts of complementary skills around um, communication and problem solving and being open to the customer, being interested in people, um, being able to, um, you know, take customers along for the journey. Because sometimes customers don't know what they want and it's your perhaps job to help them, help facilitate with them some of the, um, to understand what their problems are and to help them solve their problems. And that those are the sorts of skills that, if you have a look at the likes of what Firebrand are, are putting out there, um, as I say, I think they may already have some people just about ready to take on those roles. But it does, just gives you a sense of the kinds of, um, I suppose attributes that some employers are looking for. Um, I think I'll move on now to Myth, which actually is another creative company here in Dunedin, has been going for a long time. Um, they're a digital marketing agency um, with a really good, good reputation nationally and internationally. Um, and as I say, I talked about problem solving, it's something that they very much um, do solving problems, developing creative solutions. Um, they deal with lots of lots of different multifaceted projects, and uh, they're working on website development, brand management, e-commerce, app and mobile development, social media channels, media marketing management, etc. So, um, last I heard, they were looking for a social media intern. So. Uh, again, that communication skill, flair for languages and writing, perhaps some of you might uh, be doing some really interesting research as part of your study at the moment. So that's an indication that you know how to source information. Um, it indicates to an employer that if you're writing essays or writing reports, that, that, that you know how to write. <laughs> um, that's a good start. If you're giving presentations and tutorials or in laboratories or you're um, engaging with small groups and, and interacting and having to put your your point of view across in a, uh, a friendly and um, collegial way, then these are these are the sorts of skills that you're picking up with on campus right now that can be transferred into a work environment because every day in my work environment I'm pitching an idea to the boss, 
I've made sure I've got my research, I've done my work, done my homework, I've got a few stats, I've got a cup, I've got, I've got a bit of anecdotal, I um, can see where the need is, I'm lining it to the strategy and I, I have got a pretty clear picture of what I want and what I need to happen. And all of those are skills that people at Otago University are really very, very good at um, because this is what you're kind of getting to grips with through your various programs. And so if, if you're a student that is regularly perhaps giving a presentation or working in a group um, or um, able to go off on your own and, and research and bring back information to work collaboratively with people, these are the sorts of really um, valuable experiences that, that you can bring to the table. Even if you're just starting out, which I'm, I'm guessing a number of you are just starting out, maybe you, you, you know, you're still pretty young, just starting out, these are good things. You, you're not starting on the back foot you've actually got some really great things to offer people already. Um, it's just a matter of how you package that up. So if you're looking at what, what these em employers are talking about, yep, I mean, a lot of them will say that you, they'd love, they'd love, the, they'd love the, the stars and they'd love the moon. Um, everyone puts that in a job. You know, when I'm, when I'm asking for people to come and work with us, I always put the most perfect person in the world that I want and there's no such person so we always put that in our um, information but I think people are realistic enough to know that there are always going to be some gaps in everyone's abilities uh, but if you can bring your abilities to the table um, then you've got a reasonable chance of perhaps getting through to the next conversation which is what you want um, so Moving on to perhaps a very specific one actually now, and this, this would probably work for um, students in anthropology specifically with New Zealand Heritage Properties. They're looking for two archaeology interns. Um, so that's a, those are very specific areas uh, which some of you out there may know of somebody that's interested in this kind of thing. But again, you know, there's work around analysis, historical research and reporting. Um, so I'm not sure where the business is at yet as to whether or not they've found anyone. But if you're interested, please email hayden at heritageproperties.co.nz. Uh, a new business to the job done family is Oritane Global. Um, they're actually biotech or health technologies. They're a fascinating company, actually. They're working in the food, fashion, and retail, or sorry, it's textile area and pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical industries. Um, and they're about providing the origin of products to build trust, enhance reputations, and minimize risk. So this is a huge area uh, with a lot of focus internationally. And um, this company is doing really quite special things. So. They're looking for uh, whoever is able to get into Oritane, it would be a very fascinating role. So a business in turn to really understand all the aspects of the business. If somebody is able to get into this role, you know, there's, there's um, a really good chance of, of really getting to grips with a whole business process, which would be fascinating. Um, so they'd be asking people to work right across the company. Um, and as I said earlier, you know, if you've got great reporting skills or you're really good at research and you're able to really kind of understand concepts quickly, which I know that Otago students are really good at, um, you're able to, to really grasp situations and perhaps uh, bring information together in a concise, um, understandable way so that people, decision makers, managers can kind of quickly and efficiently understand what it is that, that, that you've presented and can make a, a decision or at least be helped in their decision making process. And so as you can see here, this is a this is going to be a hands on kind of internship role for somebody. Again, um, south of the octagon, all good things are happening on the south of the octagon. Um, of course, some great things happening north of the octagon too. But in, in my world, all the tech people are all south of the octagon. 
Uh, so if you've not been down that way, I'd suggest you go and get your shoes on and get get go for a jog down south and have a have a look around because it's pretty interesting what goes on behind these brick walls. Uh, Oratane is located in High Street, so um, please just email Stu Whitehead there, s Whitehead at Oratane dot com, if that's of interest to you. That role there. Another. Um, actually really interesting company too that's um, had uh, a long history in Dunedin and um, uh, also was uh, involved with the Audacious program which is this, the program I mentioned earlier which is helping students become entrepreneurs or become um, or to exercise their entrepreneurial muscles uh, so that they might then you know, easily fit into a, a startup here in Dunedin or a scale up company and Audacious is a great way to exercise those entrepreneurial muscles so that you are ready to do that kind of work. Um, so Pocket Smith is um, a business that came out of the, of the Audacious Entrepreneurial Program, Jason Leong. Um, and uh, he, uh, what they go about is crafting online money management, which sounds a bit dull, but in reality, it's very exciting because if you know where you are with your money, you can make decisions and make choices. So this might be great for somebody who has a financial background or does accountancy or, or is just actually kind of understands how money might work. But even if you don't, you pick it up pretty quickly. They're looking for a marketing intern. Um, and so again, all of those sorts of skills that I talked about earlier. So understanding what the market is doing, being able to research and analyze that, understanding what some of the competitors are up to. These are sort of things that most business people don't have time to do because they're so busy running their business. So it's a great opportunity to get a young intern in who can find out what are the competition up to? Uh, what's the new trend? Where are these, what's happening in the FinTech world? Um, how do we make our programs more attractive to new customers? Um, how do we tell some good stories about what might be viewed as a bit dry? How do we make it really sound kind of interesting and compelling? Uh, so I definitely recommend that you check out um, job uh, this, this particular one. You can see that they have a sort of a pretty good list of expectations there. So have a good look at that and see whether or not these are the sorts of things that you might be able to provide uh, for Jason and his team and Dora. Um, they're looking for a self-starter. They're looking for somebody um, who's actually excited to learn about the ins and outs of contributing to a business and marketing for growth. So that sort of says, if they like you, even if you don't have all these, you know, it doesn't matter if you don't have G Suite and you don't know about Slack. I know about Slack because I, I had to learn how to do it over lockdown. It's great. Once you do it a couple of times, you'll be fine. But if you don't know about it now, it doesn't matter. But if you want to find out about Slack, go online and check it out and find out what that is. So at least have some knowledge about what they're talking about. What is G Suite? What is Slack? What's that all about? Um, if nothing else, you'll learn something. Uh, but effectively, what Jason's saying is, are you the right sort of person to kind of get stuck in into a sort of a startup that's in quick growth scale up mode? Um, it's an interesting opportunity. So please email Dora at pocketsmith.com if you feel that that's right for you. I'm just on to my last couple and then if there's some questions, please sing out. So the Logic Studio, these two are both um, rather technical, but Logic Studio is in the ICT community. Again, creating websites um, down in Princess Street, again, south of the Octagon. Um, so yeah, they're looking for a web developer. Uh, lots of work. They, they're, they're very busy. When I was speaking to Ian a couple of weeks ago, they're flat out busy. So they're looking, they're looking for somebody. If you want to contact Ian Simpson, there's the email there. Um, and finally, Tussock Innovation. There's a nice story about Tussock Innovation in that they had a student as an intern, it must have been last year, went in as the marketing intern. Um, and now she's the full-time marketing manager. So 
great news for her and great news for you guys. She you might have been an Otago student even. Um, so they are specialists in internet connected or IoT product development. Um, they're working with a lot of different councils around Australia and New Zealand at the moment. They're looking for a social media intern to work with Gracie, who was the uh, job done intern last year, now their marketing manager. Um, so they're looking for someone who can create some really nice social media content for them. So again, if you're up for, if you're good at writing, if you've got a bit of a, an imagination, if you're prepared to give it a go, contact Gracie. Um, she'll happily uh, give you some uh, feedback and if you're lucky you might get in with Tusk Innovation who are both graduates again of Otago University, one in um, physics and the other graduate founder um, was in electronics so yeah really good team there um, at Tusk Innovation so I'll wrap that up those are the current opportunities that, that I've sort of wanting to highlight for you right now, but does anyone have any any burning questions or comments? Um, Chanel, thank you. Um, oh, I'm so excited! I want one. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, I can't believe some of those opportunities are amazing. Um, yeah. I guess one question is just you know. Uh, how um, is, the, is the website, um, you know, updated on where the availability still lies pretty regularly? If, if students have something there, is it still um, pretty much available? Yeah, um, generally speaking, the businesses will come back to me and say, I've found my person, and then we'll take the opportunity off. I'd say my, one or two of them may have forgotten to do that. Like I think Firebrand, just in talking with them today, I think that they are about to make an appointment but they haven't said anything as yet but um yeah i'd say um i think firebrand are actually the ones that probably have made their appointment already um but the others are re pretty reasonably good at coming back to me once i've got somebody lined up yeah because i think it's in their interests not to have to manage a whole lot of email traffic mm -hmm. so they're conscious of that but um, my plan Leslie actually is to start to do a follow-up with businesses in about 10 days time because I know students are going to go into exams right now uh, so it might be that students don't really you know are actually too busy with exams anyway but um, I'll be following up with businesses in about a week uh, a week or 10 days time and just see where they're at yeah, yeah cool. I, I think the other thing that stood out for me just listening oh someone's got a chat question oh Lucy I'll leave that one to you yeah, yeah till around what time would new positions come up I've noticed oh hang on it's disappeared <laughs> um, I've noticed the bliss technologies wasn't there at the time of the last job done seminar with you yeah we're pushing out quite um, frequently through social media channels, through Growing Dunedin's Economy and the Enterprise Dunedin Business um, channels, through LinkedIn and Facebook. Um, and we're continuing to do that. So things, yeah, that's a really good point. Just keep your eye on the website because things do change and new opportunities may come up. Nothing has ha Nothing's come up in the last week, but that's not to say that people aren't still weren't considering their options because uh, what are we we're early October so this this year because we're in a different set of circumstances I actually I told the businesses that I've opened it right up until you know um, into early next year so opportunities may still come up but I mean there will be a limit effectively to how many will be on the on the website um, as I say in the past I've normally been able to place between 48 and 50 interns, it will be different this year. There will be fewer interns this year. Uh, but the window is wider than it has been in previous years. So we'll continue to push out through our social channels. We're not actively phoning businesses and chasing people because it's, um, it's not the right time to be doing that. 
in some ways. They know the program, they know it exists, and um, they're pretty good at talking amongst themselves um, and letting others know, you know, reminding each other that this is a program that, that might be useful to them. Um, but we're not actively picking up the phone and, and sort of racing around businesses and saying, have you, have you applied yet, you know? But, um, but we are working through our social media, media channels to raise awareness. Thank you. Are there any more questions for Chanel? One thing I should talk about maybe is that if you do land an internship, um, it is, it is a, in terms of uh, remuneration, it's important that you have that conversation with the business person. That's something that you have with yourself and the business person. Uh, that's not something that, that, um, that we get in, involved in, but uh, you know, we do, um, if you look at the business part of the, website and their guidelines I do give a bit of a guideline as to you know what might be appropriate in terms of a, a rate um, if that's helpful to students if you're nervous about opening up that conversation thank you but, that's always a difficult conversation to have so it is and New Zealanders in general are not very good at it yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The guidelines are helpful, yeah. So the guy, I popped in the guidelines for the businesses that, you know, we recommend between, yeah. I think it's 18 and 25, but, you know, um, it is up to the business as to how much they will pay you. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, that's just what we recommend. And they can take it or leave it, but that's a guide. It's a guideline only. Mm. Thank you. Mm. The other thing is that the internships – as I say, it's about the business need. They may go for four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, a couple of months. Just really depends on what the business is looking for. And it can be full-time, part-time. It can be just whatever that business is sort of needing at that particular time. So you just need to talk with the business person about their expectations and what, what it is, you know. And... Um, and um, yeah, just be really upfront with any questions that you have that they, they will appreciate that. Thank you so much. Are there, are there any other questions? Lindley, any other burning questions that you might have? Um, not really. I think it, just reiterating what you were talking about, Chanel, you know, it's a slightly different application process um, and, um, I guess, you know, do you think they need to see a formal CV? You, you, you avoided using the word CV at that point, I think. Is it in, but do they want a, a formal CV with that initial, you know, email inquiry? Or could it just be more of a summary of key skills and experience within the email? I think it depends on the role. Um... CVs can be a bit fraught because some, if they're not right, they can be off-putting. Mm. And you'll know this from your own experience. I think it's worse to get a CV that's not tailored to the role, that's just a bit of a hodgepodge of whatever. Uh, if you're going to put a CV there, then make sure it's tight mm. and, and relevant. Um, and I think in the in the email, really put front and center, you know, the three key things that you can bring to that role and, and that, that would probably help um, the business person identify whether or not they want to take, take the conversation further. Um, so, I, I mean, a full blow, I don't think, luckily, in some ways, students don't have full blown CDs of, uh, CVs of, pages of pages of stuff which a lot of people my age might have and which we shouldn't because we have to condense it and make it tight ourselves so it's just you won't if you've been to see us that's right <laughs> i agree lindley <laughs> you're quite right and it's a it's a trap for old players as well <laughs> so um keeping it tight and relevant and to the point whatever it is that you're putting out there whether it's in cd cv form 
or um, you know, your yeah, we your overall covering email message. Just keep it concise, tight, relevant, friendly. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Okay, well, if, if there are no more questions, I think we'll wrap this up. If you do have any questions or think of anything afterwards, be please do email me, graduate.recruitment at Otago. Um, we can, and we can help you if you want to show us your initial email or your CV before you send it in. Absolutely, please make an appointment to come and see us. Um, and then it just remains for me to say thank you so much, Chanel. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your enthusiasm. These internships are such wonderful opportunities for students. So, um, yeah, very, very grateful to you. So thank you. And thank you to you students for coming along. As I said earlier, I know how busy you all are. So, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Lucy and Lindley and, and all the students who've turned up today. That's great. 90% of success is showing up. So congratulations. <laughs> and um, best wishes for all your exams. Um, it's a hard stressful time of the year but it'll all be worth it in the end <laughs> and uh, I look forward to perhaps meeting some of you later on maybe as the program unfolds and yeah best wishes for the rest of the year thank you thanks Chanel okay <laughs>